Welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Torqued. I left off the last episode having just gotten kind of local mana movement and storage going on within the Batania base, and I was wondering what to do for transporting it to the mainland. And I kind of left the question hanging in the air of, am I actually going to use mana for generating canola seeds, or was I going to use something else? Well, I've decided on mana, and was thinking of how to do that. Of course, I could just make a bunch of mana spreaders and a bunch of mana pools and whatnot and chain them all together all the way to the destination, but I wanted to do it a different way that's probably more efficient and certainly way faster and also just kind of cooler. So this is what I settled on. Uh, I spent a bit of time trying to figure out if this was even possible and also trying to just learn a bit because this is my attempt at transferring mana using minecarts. It is possible. It is officially supported. Uh, there is a... There's a thing called a mana pump, which is used to go from a mana pool into a minecart. It pumps the mana into the minecart. And there's also a cart with, with mana pool. So it absolutely supports, Batania already supports, transferring mana through minecarts. Now, the thing is though, my skills on minecarts are pretty weak. I barely do anything with them. I mean, you can see I haven't used minecarts a single time in everything that I've built so far. So I just did this to kind of refresh my memory and also figure out how exactly this would work out and if I could get it to work pretty easily with Xnet. And it turns out I can. So, let me take you through how this works. So this, by the way, all this stuff was just cheated in, just for the sake of kind of prototyping the thing. So I'm not going to actually utilize any of these materials, I'm going to make everything myself. But this is just the prototype. So, I'm going to assume you don't know how minecarts work, just like me. Uh, I'm going to be utilizing just rails and also powered rails. So powered rails are powered not by RF or anything like that, but just by a redstone signal. And if a powered rail is powered, it will, con it will increase the speed of the minecart in whatever direction the minecart is already going. If it's not powered, then it acts like a brake. It'll stop the minecart. So these kind of powered rails in the center are just for making sure that the minecart goes fast. But the powered rails at each end, this being kind of the unloading mana area, and this being the mana generation loading area, uh, these powered rails are used to start and stop it at the beginning and at the destination. So if they're shut down, the minecart will come here and it'll just stop, where it can then be loaded up with mana using this mana pump connected to this mana pool. And then if you activate the power of this powered rail, it will it will send the minecart going the other direction. So that's what that's about. Now the trick becomes how do I load mana in and load mana out and make it so that the system sends the minecart back and forth intelligently. So what I did... Do I want to break that? Not really. Actually, alright, fine. So if I break that, the minecart will go to the other side. I'll explain why in just a second. But basically what happens is when it's on this side, it will get pumped with mana from the mana pool. Um, that just happens automatically. The mana pump doesn't need any sort of power or anything like that. It just, if there is mana to be pumped, it will pump it. And it'll go to the other side in just a second. Notice this is lit up, and now it's not. So don't worry about that for a second. Oh, I guess the system breaks if I don't put down a, ma down a mana pool. <laughs> Let me put one here. Boop, now it should stop. There we go, it's unloading it as you can see. Okay, so the mana cart is here and it's empty, right? So mana starts to get pumped from here into it. Now here's what's, happen what's happening. Um, I have this redstone comparator that is connected to the mana pump. A redstone comparator is just a thing to measure something, measure some sort of a redstone signal from an item. What that signal means is just dependent on the item. In this case, a uh, Batania mana pump will output a redstone signal that corresponds to how full the minecart is with mana. And default redstone ranges in power from 0 to 15, so 16 different values of redstone. And when this comparator outputs a signal of 15, the max signal, that means that the minecart is completely full. So what happens is when the minecart is completely full, it sends a redstone signal which I read in the XNet network through this redstone proxy. So this just reads the redstone signal coming out of the comparator. And then I have the logic set up in here, just all on one channel, that says when you receive a 15 redstone signal from there, send a redstone signal to this repeater, 
which just serves as a way of getting power to this powered rail and providing it with power. So when it is full, when you receive 15 redstone over there, send redstone to here, which sends it to the powered rail, powers it, and sends the minecart to the other side. The purpose of the repeater is just to give Xnet something to connect to. It will not connect to a rail directly, so I just needed to put something it would connect to, and it just happens to connect to a redstone repeater, and a redstone repeater just happens to just take a redstone signal and just repeat it, just like the name implies. The only negative effect is that it delays it by one tick, but that's not a big deal. So that's how this side works. Then it comes over here, and I'll just ignore part of this for a second. It comes over here, and this is of course kept powered off, the powered rail that's underneath this, so it stops. This thing is full of mana, this thing isn't. This is a mana pump that is simply flipped around the other direction, so it pumps from here into here, emptying it. And then I have a redstone comparator connected to the mana pool, not the mana pump, but the mana pool. This does a similar thing where it outputs a signal of 15 if this mana pool is full. And I read that with this redstone proxy here. And basically how I set it up is that I made it so that Xnet will... It will only send the signal to send this cart back the other direction if this mana pool is empty. Because I'm thinking how I'm going to have it set up. This is this mana unloading section is going to be on the mainland. This is going to be the destination where the mana goes. It's going to pump into this pool, and then I'm thinking I'm going to have a couple pools next to it with dominant sparks. And this one will have... Well, I guess I'll have normal sparks on those pools and a recessive spark on this mana pool. So whatever is in this pool is going to automatically be transferred out to my battery storage on the mainland. And when this mana pool gets completely empty, that means we need to kind of refill our buffer, and so we send it back. But if this mana pool is not empty, that means it can't push any more mana to my battery storage. Which means if my battery storage is full, then there's no reason to send for more mana. So that's kind of how I have it set up. So that's why if you break this, it reads as zero, hey, I'm empty, and then it sends it back to the other side, where it will then fill up very quickly. I think, oh no, it's not going to fill up because I took the mana tablet out. Oh, I have the <laughs> I have the creative mana tablet on me. That's going to take a while to fill up. They don't transfer very fast. But yeah, when that's full, it's going to send it back here, and it'll start to fill up. Now, there is a problem that you maybe spot or maybe don't. It's going to try to send the cart back. Or, yeah, um, it's going to try to send the cart back if this mana pool is empty. But if this mana pool is empty and the cart is coming from over there to over here, it's going to send it back immediately. Because this thing's empty, that thing's full, it hasn't, it's going to send it back before it has a chance to even start transferring mana to this mana pool to then read, to then say, hey, we want to keep the cart here. So that's where this comes in, this RF Tools sensor. Um, it basically just detects if there's an entity standing right here. Unfortunately, it doesn't specify that it has to be a mana cart. It's going to come over in just a sec. Boop. Um, it doesn't specify that it has to be a mana pool cart. I can't seem to get the sensor to do that. It detects any entity that's standing here, including me or a pig or a cow or something like that. But it's good enough. If there's an entity, such as a mana pool cart, here, um, it, it has to be here before it will even consider sending the minecart back. So it's not going to try to send the minecart back unless it detects a minecart. And the reason that works to stop the problem of it kind of getting sent back prematurely um, is because there's a delay in the sensor. It takes the sensor just a little bit to figure out that there's a minecart there, and it takes Xnet just a little bit to read it. And in that time, because the mana pump pumps so fast, in that delay, the mana pump uh, pumps enough into the mana pool that this then triggers and the thing says, don't send the cart back. This thing is not empty. I hope that makes sense. So that's how that works. I'm not going to go over it again, because I'm just going to set it up, but on a larger scale. You know, it's going to be this exact same start point and end point in the Batania base. The only difference being that the whole middle section is going to be much, much longer, since it has to go all the way from the Batania base out in the middle of the ocean. From here to, like, here. 
So that's going to be longer, but aside from that, it's going to work the same way. Now, I want to try something new for building the tunnel that's going to go from underneath the ocean, underneath the Batania base, all the way back to the mainland. And yes, I know I already kind of built one, but that one's not... I mean, is it big enough? Uh, let me go check. Maybe it is big enough. Eh, it doesn't really work, if for no other reason than it has this huge section here that just goes straight up. <laughs> that doesn't work with minecarts. And yeah, it's not all that big. I mean, it, it would actually be big enough for a minecart, absolutely. But I want to make a new hole, and I want to make it a different way. I don't want to do it manually. Instead, I'm going to try something called the RF Tools Builder, or Builder Block, I guess. This thing, as it says, it can quarry areas, pump liquids, move copy swap structures, etc., etc. It can do a bunch of things. But the first one is the most important in my case. Quarry areas. They can just clear out a big area. So I'm going to make this, I have very little experience with it, but I think it can do what I want it to do. A little bit pricey. That's easy. Machine frame, easy. Blocks of manulin. Builder's wand. Um, I'm not sure if I've ever made... No, I did make magical wood to make my builder's wand, but I'll probably have to make more. Oh, that's actually going to be a problem, because I've only got one level of XP. <laughs> I, I need more levels to uh, make magical wood. But that's fine, I'm gonna go try to make it, and I'll be right back. Well, it turns out making the builder is the easy part. Um, I haven't actually quite made it yet, but I was just looking at the things I need to make it actually work. And I need a... I need a quarry card. Um, yeah, so I need a shape card quarry. And this thing is really expensive, as you can see. It takes two mining lasers, a power cell from RF tools, and an iridium iron plate, which takes an iridium ingot, which comes from uh, some other iridium thing that I'm making at the moment. I can make it from iridium nuggets. Or, anyway, I'm just actually making iridium ore right now in the molecular transformer. However, it takes 9 million EU. The input is just a single, I think it's a piece of iron, but the hard part is the 9 million EU. I mean, I can do it, but this thing isn't that fast, and that is more than double what this MFE holds. So I upgraded my basic energy cube to an advanced, so I could supply this thing with power a little bit faster. It's still not able to keep up, because this thing only outputs 320 EU per tick, whereas this thing takes, I think, 512 EU per tick. So it's not the fastest, but it's going at a decent clip. Anyway, while I'm waiting for that, I want to test out this mining laser. I've never used it before. Let's go to the mining dimension and I guess blow stuff up. Just charge it with 51.6 thousand EU. Okay, cool. Oh, the power. It's so powerful. <laughs> I thought... Like, I have a vague memory of watching somebody using a mining laser, and I just, in my head, I pictured something that actually made a huge explosion. It's very, very quiet, very gentle, no explosion whatsoever. Oh wow, that just went through all the power super fast. Huh. I wonder if this thing has upgrades you can give it. Because on its own, it kind of sucks. Enchantments. Oh, so you can enchant it. Magnetic efficiency fortune. Hmm. Alright, well that was a bit underwhelming. Oh, wow. Uh, I was doing that iridium thing the hard way. I was making this, like, iridium ore in a molecular transformer for 9 million EU, which takes forever and only gives you one ore that can make one ingot. But I looked around and realized you can just use iridium dust from rock hounding. So instead of spending like 10 minutes waiting for 9 million EU to go by for one ingot, I can just do that and there's like 12. There. Pretty cool. That's faster. Alright, I think I have the builder block set up correctly. Again, I have very, very little experience with it, but 
Um, I believe the basic way it works is the builder block itself is kind of the brains of the operation, but you need a shape card to tell it what to do and exactly where to do it. And I believe I've set up this shape card correctly. There's kind of two ways to configure the shape card. One way is you can actually, you can actually like uh, sneak right click on the builder block and then it asks you to select two corners. And then once you select those two corners, it kind of automatically fills this thing in. Fills in these things, the dimensions of the box or whatever shape you're trying to do something with. And the offset from the builder block that you're trying to do it at. So it'll automatically fill it in, or of course you could just do this manually. So I want a big line down there, far under the water that goes all the way over to the mainland. So I just dug the line down and then I selected the corners with the shape card here and here. So I kind of filled this whole area in with the shape card. And then I just extended this dimension to 130 because I want it to go all the way that way. I want it to go more in the X direction which is what this is, and that's what this direction is, the X. And I think that's it. So we can make absolutely sure by doing this preview thing. So if we enable that, we'll have this like, well, preview, oh. Oh, I see. <gasps> that went in the wrong X direction, because this is... This is negative x. So, how do we fill that in though? How do we fill in negative x on the dimension? Just negative? No, it's blo zero blocks. Oh, wait a minute. This thing's really complicated. I. I think we do that here. Does this even work? It doesn't appear to be doing anything. Oh. What the hell? Why is it up here now? Did the card settings get reset? I don't know what's happening anymore. <laughs> um, This builder, my god. I hate it. <laughs> It's so powerful, but for this particular use, it's incredibly confusing. I still have no idea what it's going to do. I don't understand. I don't understand the coordinates and the offset system. Thinking of it just like straightforward and, and logically doesn't seem to make it work at all. I, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just going to run it and see if it works. So it needs a redstone signal. Um, the shape card has it set to automatically void these things, some of the most common things. So most stuff, most stuff should get deleted. Some things probably won't, and I think they'll automatically be put in this chest up here. Uh, I mean, this can't be a complete disaster. The only worry is that it may make a tunnel that doesn't go that way, but instead goes that way or goes both ways. I don't know. I'm trying to see, before I do it though, like, how do I know it's working? If it's voiding most of, I don't know. Here we go. Okay. It's done a bunch of stuff. <laughs> I turned it off. It's probably done like 5 million blocks now. What have you done? Did it do that? Surely it's done more than this. This doesn't... This doesn't make any sense. Unless... Oh, it might be starting at the other end. Maybe it's not starting here. Okay, yeah, I, I could see that. I guess I'll just let it go all the way. Okay, what it appears to have done is replaced everything forwards the way I wanted to go. And backwards with dirt. I guess that's the default behavior of a quarry card because uh, there are multiple kinds of quarry cards I could turn it into a clearing quarry instead of just a normal quarry and I guess that's what I need to make it actually delete rather than replace with dirt but also I think what it did is it went the whole distance the 130 blocks I wanted to go that direction 
and I think it split the difference and did half of that in each direction. So I think the location, the dimension, and the offset is centered in the shape. I... This thing is terrible to use. It's like the most confusing possible thing. Alright, now I've got a clearing quarry inside of it, and I'm running it again. It's actually got some stats that you can look at on the front of it. Looks like it's almost done or done, so now I can finally see what it's actually done. Yes. It looks like it has split the difference and gone both ways. Let's see how far this goes. Hope this didn't intersect with any of my tunnels that I made. Nope, it didn't. So, it goes from like 2, let's just round it to like 210 on the X direction. 210... Yep, it's halved it. So I need to offset it by half of the total dimension. That is ridiculous. Alright, well, I ended up just giving up on that builder's block and I just made the whole tunnel myself. It ended up kind of overshooting by a lot, actually. Um, <laughs> comes up over there, so I had to kind of loop back a bit to come back here. And I'm about to do a test run and make sure that the cart is reasonably fast and doesn't end up stopping on any hills. So let's actually just ride a minecart ourselves both ways and see how it goes. Should be fun, too. So we have to push it a little bit. <laughs> there we go. It's really loud, but it sounds so much better than default. Um, it must be dynamic surroundings that replaced the minecart sounds. Yeah, that was reasonably fast. Didn't take too long. Didn't stop anywhere. I'm, I'm pretty confident it would work the other way. Because I made all uphill slopes just pure powered rails. So it can't possibly run out of juice, I think. Okay. Well, now I need to get together everything I need to recreate the system I had before. So... I guess I gotta go make some proxies and some mana pumps. Speaking of, how do you actually make mana pumps? They're not hard, are they? Oh no, that's easy. Something I can do, by the way, to make this whole system much, much easier, I think, is wireless transmission of redstone. Because the way I have it right now, I could just connect the system, you know, on, on this side. On the mana filling side, I can connect the accent system just to this. Yeah, we got four extra channels, it'd be fine. But, I needed to connect on the other side too, so does that mean I run an entire extent network cable all along? I mean, I could do that, and that would certainly work. But, I think I want to try wireless transmission of redstone. I think RF Tools has something for that. I'll check it out. Okay, if I have configured this correctly the same way that I did it before, with the change of using these wireless redstone transmitters from RF Tools, then this should work. This mana cart is, or this minecart rather, is just about to be filled up. It should be sent to the other side as soon as it is. Okay. Well, that's a problem. Oh, you know what? I think this redstone repeater's backwards. I always forget which end is the input and which one's the output. I think that's backwards. That's still backwards, so I need to place it like this. Well, that wasn't the problem. Okay, found the problem. I forgot to use a redstone proxy here to read from the redstone comparator. That would explain it. Alright, let's re-enable this. So maybe this was the right way before. Okay, there we go. 
Let's just try to beat it to the other side. Shouldn't be a problem. And let's see if the other side is working well. See, so yeah, you can see I've got all these sensors set up here. This one is for telling the cart to return back. So this is a receiver that receives from the other side. And these are all transmitters that it can use to... Oh, here it comes. Used to detect whether the card is present and the level of the manhole. All right, so what's going to happen? Is it going to bounce? It didn't bounce. Good. Now, it should be sent back as soon as that empties. So this is lowering very fast because it's being dispersed with sparks. Come on, come on, come on, come on. It's broken. <laughs> Question is, why is it broken? So we can see our outputs here are correct. Right, this is outputting 0, saying it's empty. This is outputting 15, saying yes, there is a cart present. So those are our correct conditions. So... What else is wrong? And you can see I'm not actually properly sending the signal. So something's wrong on the other side, I think. It's possible I mixed up these channels, because each one has its own channel. This one's channel 1, channel 2. Let me go check the other side. Turns out it was another redstone proxy issue, forgot to use them. I activated it and fixed it and uh, the cart came back to me. So I'm about to test it again. This should send, that shouldn't change at all. Yep, so that still works. Let's go check it on the other side. That worked like normal. Let's see what happens when this mana pool is emptied. It should go back this time. Yes! Haha! <laughs> it worked! One thing I'm not sure about is, does the cart need to be chunk-loaded? I feel like it might, because when I was on the opposite side fixing the whole proxy issue, I waited for a good while, expecting the cart to come back, and it didn't. And then when I flew over here, the cart wasn't here. And then when I flew back, it was on its way. Which makes me think that it, like, because I flew over there, it chunk-loaded and actually started coming or something like that. I'm not sure. All right, well, cool. Yep, and here it is. And it's gonna stay here until it's full again. Sweet, it works. And it didn't have to run huge XNet cables because I use wireless transmitters. That's so cool. So something I should probably improve upon is I think I should protect the rail a bit. Um, not really so much down here in the tunnels. I think it's pretty safe. I made sure to light it up so enemies won't spawn. But up there on the overworld over there, it's pretty vulnerable, because if an enemy gets in the way of the cart, it could stop it, and then the whole thing will probably just never start up again? Actually, to be honest, if it got stopped, it most likely will be fine. Even if it ends up getting redirected the opposite way, it, you know, if the cart gets like halfway there, gets stopped, and then ends up coming back here, it's just going to be sent back once again. So it might not be a huge deal. As long as it doesn't actually get stuck stuck. It could happen. It could get totally stuck. Like if it stops at a point in the rail where there's no powered rails, then nothing's going to make it go again. So we'll see how that is. But I think on the mainland I should maybe put fences around it or something like that. Just to keep some enemies and stuff out of it. Although I did light up the area so it should be a bit safer from enemies than it was before. Want to see something cool? So the max height on my jetpack is about why 180 to 190. If you fall from this height to the very tip of my dome, you like just punch through the water and just take a tiny bit of damage. It's really cool. Ah, look at all these particles. Oh, something else I noticed by the way. Believe it or not, the single elven mana spitter I have going to each one of these mana pools to supply the floating bubble is actually not enough to support the bubble. It's Each one is very slowly losing mana. I'm really surprised. I don't know if it's because of the inefficiency of going from a mana spreader directly to another mana spreader or if it's just they use more mana than I thought. But yeah, they're running out. One over there already ran out a little while ago. I put some mana tablets in it to get it going. Um, I realized the problem when I checked on the farms one, and it was, it scared the hell out of me. It had a tiny sliver of mana left. So I just, like, just totally got scared and tried to get it up and going as fast as possible because I do not want these crops and these worms to wash away. 
So I need to figure out a better way to do this. Either more mana spreaders, or just go to a pool and then go to here. Yeah, not sure. I'll figure it out. Alright, well I know I accomplished very little, but I have been recording for about an hour and a half, and I need to go to bed soon. <laughs> yeah, it took a long time building the tunnel. Building the... Ironically, the... Building the builder block from RF tools took a really long time. Not because of this itself, really, but because of the quarry card. I took all these things. The iridium stuff, and the mining lasers, and the power cell, and these are industrial diamonds, not normal diamonds. And I ran into issues with that, and all sorts of stuff, and then of course using the tool itself was pretty horrible, and I... Uh, anyway. Yeah, it took a long time, didn't accomplish that much, but... I've got the cool mana cart, mana system going. It works really well. I'm really proud of it. And, yeah, I feel happy about that. So I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, I'm going to hook the mana system up on the mainland to something useful. That is, make it uh, actually run with agrocarnations on the farms, so that we produce more than enough of the canola seeds to make sure our power can always be running at full capacity. And then try to fix the mana issue around here with the bubbles, and then see what else we can do.